Okay, is this thing on? Okay, yes it is. All right, good night everyone. Uh, it is now, I think, minutes to 12. So it's almost the morning. Whatever time you see this video, good morning, good afternoon, good night. I was up reading and I was able to finish my reading goals for today. I read from the book of Hebrews to the book of Jude. That's how many books? Uh, Hebrews, James, 1st, 2nd Peter, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I was able to read 8 books today out of the Bible, out of the New Testament. Tomorrow, I'm going to finish the book of Revelation and finally be able to get to the Gospels because what I wanted to do is read through the epistles and then read through the Gospels because as I said I'm breaking into my new Bible so I got this new Bible it's my personal Bible and I'm reading it so that I could break into it and also copy into it all the notes that I have in my previous Bible which has expired in my opinion it's very old <laughs> I had it since 2018 and it's ruined basically the New Testament is ruined because I used highlighters that that were gel ink, gel highlighters, and the whole New Testament got bled through. I wasn't going to change it, but then I realized that I did make a, a really good investment when I bought this because the, what can I call this, the the outside covering starts to break away after a few years so I had to make sure I invested in a Bible that's gonna last me a lifetime and that Bible is genuine goat skin leather you have to excuse me my nose is a little bit stuffy tonight have been sick for the past few days but I will get better when it is in accordance to God's will. I'll get better when God wants me to get better. Anyways, the reason why I'm making this video is because I want to address uh, a common objection. Excuse me. A common... That's not going to help. A common objection to the veracity of the Word of God. A lot of people, well, in my experience, this has always happened in my geographical location, Jamaica. I'm Jamaican. I'm in Jamaica right now. Every time this has happened to me, it has always been in Jamaica. So I cannot speak to whether or not this happens to any other place in the world. Even when I'm watching street preaching videos on YouTube, I don't see anyone or hear anyone bringing this up. But it's something that has been brought up in my hearing multiple times in my experience in my geographical location. So I'm going to be addressing it. And what I'm talking about is this whole issue of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And the objection is this. The Old Testament says an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But the New Testament says turn the other cheek. Isn't that a contradiction? And some would say, hey, that's a contradiction. So we do not trust the Bible. Or, hey, that's a contradiction. I do not trust the Bible. The Old Testament contradicts the New Testament. And they spout this off. Or rather, I would say they regurgitate this because most of them are speaking from something they heard someone said as opposed to something they read. They're just regurgitating what they heard. So when you ask them the question... Where in the Bible does it say that? 
<laughs> they can't tell you. What they'll say is this. Hey, you are the Christian. You read the Bible. You read the Bible. You should tell me where that is in the Bible. <sighs> Anyways, just to, just to address that objection. First of all, the Old Testament does not contradict the New Testament. The Old Testament does not say in these words only an eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, and the New Testament goes ahead and contradicts it and says, turn the other cheek. But rather, both of those passages, or rather both of those phrases, are quoted in the same chapter in the New Testament. It's not the case where the Old Testament said this and the New Testament said that. But rather, it is the case that both of them are mentioned in the New Testament. So, Matthew chapter 5. Let's go to the verse that we often hear people quote and misunderstand it. And then give the right understanding so that all of you can be equipped for whatever this comes up. Matthew chapter 5 verse 38. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. That's the verse, okay? That's the verse. And here is the other phrase that comes in the following verse, verse 39. But I say to you, do not ris resist an evil person. I'm going to read that again, sorry. But I say to you, do not resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. Okay. Leave it there. The understanding here, the understanding that is given, as I said before, is that verse 8 is quoted in the Old Testament. Sorry, verse 38 is quoted in the Old Testament, and verse 39 is quoted in the New Testament, and this is a contradiction. We don't trust the Bible. Well, it's not a contradiction, and I'll tell you why. The reason why this is not a contradiction is because Jesus Christ is not here quoting something that the Old Testament is proclaiming, but rather Jesus Christ is here proclaiming or rather quoting the traditions of the Pharisees. Now, the Pharisees took some verses out of the Old Testament. Well, I'm not going to say verses because the Bible is not divided well, the Old Testament was not divided into verses until 1228 A.D. by, uh, what's his name, Rabbi Nathan. So I'm not going to say verses, but rather passages in the Old Testament were taken out of context by the Pharisees in their traditions. So when you go to the Old Testament to look for a passage that says eye for an eye, you are going to see that this is a part of God's civil law to the Israelites. There are three laws in different categories in the Old Testament. The moral law, the civil law, and the ceremonial laws. Moral laws, civil laws, and ceremonial laws. This, These passages, these... Uh, no, I'm going to say verses. These verses are quoted within a long list of the civil laws. Now, we're going to go to them, just in case you're following with me. The first place we're going to be going is Exodus chapter 21, verse 24. Exodus 21, 24. I'm going to mark this passage in Matthew. So, Exodus chapter 21, Verse 24. Exodus 21, 24. The Bible says, Eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. Right? The passage starts from verse 22. Let's read it. If any man struggles with each other and strikes a woman with a child so that she gives birth prematurely, Yet there is no injury. 
he shall surely be fined as the woman's husband made demand of him, and she shall pay as the ju judges decide. But if there is any other injury, then you shall appoint as a penalty life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. What is this talking about? This is talking about justice. This is talking about the civil laws made by the authorities in the nation of Israel. Laws that are there in place to execute or carry out justice to the offender. And that is equality in the penalty. Penal equality, if that's even a word. And, and we're going to see why this was necessary in a moment. And what the Jews were doing with the passage. The next passage of scripture is Leviticus 24, verse 20. Leviticus 24, verse 20. And the context starts from verse 17. If a man takes the life of any human being, he shall surely be put to death. The one who takes the life of an animal shall make it good, life for life. If a man injures his neighbor, just as he has done, so it shall be done to him. Verse 20. Fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, just as he has injured a man, so it shall be inflicted on him. Talking about justice. Justice carried out and executed by the governing authorities who made those civil laws. Continuing on, last passage. Last passage. Deuteronomy 19, verse 21. Deuteronomy 19, verse 31. Deuteronomy 19, verse 21. The Bible says, Thus you shall not show pity, life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hat for hat. The passage starts at verse 15. It says, A single witness shall not rise up against a man on account of any iniquity or any sin which he has committed. On the evidence of two or three witnesses, a matter shall be confirmed. If a malicious witness rises up against a man to accuse him of wrongdoing, then both the men who have the dispute shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges who will be in office in those days. The judges shall in investigate thoroughly, and if the witness is a false witness and he has accused his brother falsely, then you shall do to him just as he had intended to do to his brother. Thus you shall purge the evil from among you. The rest will hear and be afraid and will never do such an evil thing among you. Thus you shall do, thus you shall not show partiality, sorry, verse 21, life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hat for hat, foot for foot. See, talk about justice. Okay. Now this is how the Pharisees missed to use the passage. They were using this passage as personal vengeance. If someone does something to you, do it back to them. However, the Old Testament teaching on this matter is this. Someone does something to you, you bring it to the authorities and let them administer the justice. Because guess what? This is, this is human nature. When someone does something to us, when we take vengeance, what do we typically do? We typically take it further than what we had received. Haven't you noticed? Someone kills your 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 someone kills your friend. You kill them and you kill their dog. 
someone slaps your uh, your brother. You slap them and you slap their sister. Someone uh, hits your child. You hit them and you hit their child. What, what I'm trying to prove is this. You may not have done any of those things. What I'm trying to say is this. Most of us, when we are taking vengeance for ourselves, we carry it further than the offense that we incurred. We take it further than what the person did wrong to us when we take vengeance for ourselves. And this is what the Pharisees were doing with those passages in the Old Testament. They were using Exodus 21-24, Leviticus 24-20, and Deuteronomy 19-21, taking those words only, eye for eye and tooth for tooth, to be this. Take vengeance for yourselves. Someone does something to you, you do it back to them. But what does Jesus say? He says this, But I say to you, do not resist an evil person. But whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. So Jesus is saying, Someone does something to you, do not take it in your own hands. Do not retaliate. Take it. And might I add, because we got to explain this one too. This is not talking about a physical slap in the face. This is talking about an insult. If you are insulted, if you are disrespected, you are to turn the other cheek. What does that mean? You are to take it. You are to take it. You are not to defend yourself. If someone, uh, if someone assaults you, you better bring it to the governing authorities. Scripture says you should submit to the governing authorities. Uh, Matthew chapter, sorry, Romans chapter 13. Is it Romans 13? I think so. Submit to the governing authorities, Romans chapter 13. I am not absolutely sure if it's 13 or 14. Yes, Thir Romans chapter 13 and First Peter chapter 4. Submit to the governing authorities. What does the governing authority say about if someone assaults you? You report it, and they take it into their hands, and they administer justice. We're not supposed to take vengeance for yourself in these situations. Anyways, why do I say this means an insult? I'll show you why. Job chapter 16, verse 10. It's an insult because... In that culture, an insult can be seen as a slap, or a slap can be seen as an insult. It is not a physical slap. It is an insult. And that's what I'm going to show you from Scripture. You can memorize this verse if you want. It's Job chapter 16, verse 10. The Word of God says, They have gaped at me with their mouth. They have slapped me on the cheek with contempt. They have masked themselves against me. This is when Job says they have slapped me on the cheek with contempt. Uh, with a hand, right? With contempt. And notice what it says. When I say to you, do not resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek. Okay, in a culture where most people are right-handed, if someone slaps you on your right cheek, how will he slap you on your right cheek with his right hand, being as he's right-handed? He's going to give you a backhanded slap. In those days, a backhanded slap was seen as an insult. To give the back of the hand. And Job 16.10 vindicates my interpretation. And not only that. Let's say for the sake of argument. That Jesus Christ was here telling you that this is how you are supposed to react when someone slaps you physically in the face. If that is the case. Whoever goes along with that interpretation is going to find themselves in a, in, in a world of problems. Why? Because it is inconsistent with the rest of Scripture. 
What am I talking about? John chapter 18, verse 22. Jesus was slapped in the face. What did he do? Did he turn the other cheek? Oh, no, he didn't. No, he didn't. Let's read what he did. John chapter 18, verse 22. Jesus was slapped in the face. Did he turn the other cheek? No, he did not. We are going to read about what he did. 1822, the Bible says, When he had said this, one of the officers standing nearby struck Jesus, saying, Is that the way you answer the high priest? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken wrongly, testify of the wrong. But if rightly, why do you strike me? Jesus <laughs> just said, Why did you strike me? I didn't do anything wrong. He didn't turn the other cheek because he's not teaching that we are supposed to be pacifists as someone who slaps us in our face we are supposed to turn the other cheek. Someone could just be spiteful and just keep slapping you. You turn the other cheek, he slaps you again. You turn the other cheek, he slaps you again. And you just keep going. But fortunately, Christ is not telling us to do this. And a follower of Christ, Paul. Paul was slapped in the face. What did Paul do? Acts chapter 23, verse 2 to 3. Let's see what Paul did when he was slapped in the face. Acts chapter 23, verse 2 and verse 3. The high priest Ananias commanded those standing beside him to strike him on the mouth. Of course they did. Verse 3. Then Paul said to him, God is going to strike you, you whitewashed wall. Do you sit to try me according to the law and in violation of the law order me to be struck? But the bystander says, do you revile God's high priest? Verse, that's verse 4. Verse 5 says, and Paul said, I was not aware, brethren, that he was high priest. For it is written, you shall not speak evil of the ruler of your people. Excuse me. So, this is not teaching that you are supposed to receive a slap in your face and you take it. Because Jesus Christ didn't follow that command because he didn't teach it. Paul did not follow that command because as a fellow believer, as a fellow Christian, he was not commanded by his Lord, our Lord, anywhere to turn the other cheek and receive another slap. But rather, Matthew chapter 5, verse 38, is talking about insults, disrespect, not defending yourself. When someone insults you, do not curse them, bless them, and move on. All right, I was not intending for this video to be this long. I hope that if someone brings up this objection to you, you are able to respond. As the scripture says in uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, well, 2 Peter chapter 2, wait, I, I, wanna get, I don't want to get this wrong. Hold on. It's Second Peter. It's not Second Peter. It's it's First Peter. Chapter. Three fifteen. Is it three fifteen? Yes, it is. It is. It is three fifteen. I remembered. But sanctify Christ as Lord in your hearts, always being ready to make a defense to everyone who asks you to give an account for the hope that is in you, yet with gentleness and reverence. Always be ready to give a defense. All right? And what I have done in this video is help you to give a defense to the objection that the Bible is contradictory because in one place it says turn the other cheek, and in one place it says an eye for an eye. All right? So I hope that you all were able to survive the length of this video i'm sorry i had this video going for 25 minutes it's my apology 
I'm going to get some sleep now, and I'm going to wake up tomorrow, I'm going to go to work, and I'm going to read God's Word at work, and I'm going to study some Greek, because right now I'm refreshing my mind on Greek prepositions and the verb me, which means am or exist, and all its various forms, the verb me. For those of you who practice Greek, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Anyways. You all have a good night. God bless you. Thank you so much for the support and for the continued participation in watching my videos. There are more to come. Thank you so much again. God bless you. Keep me in your prayers as I do the same for you. In Jesus' name, God bless.